your name? Aloy! Hey everyone, this is Player One, and I'm coming to you with a detailed review of Horizon Zero Dawn. Before we continue, let's set up the actual story itself, and here's some information from the publisher. The story is set approximately 1,000 years in the future, in a world where humans have regressed to primitive tribal societies as a result of some unknown calamity. Their technologically advanced predecessors are vaguely remembered as the old ones. Large robotic creatures now dominate the Earth. For the most part, they peacefully coexist with humans, who occasionally hunt them for parts. However, a phenomenon known as the derangement has caused machines to become more aggressive towards humans and larger and more deadlier machines have begun to appear. Throughout the game you run into three different tribes, the Nora, the Karja, and the Osaram. The Nora are fierce hunter-gatherers who live in the mountains and worship nature as the Ob Mother. The Karja are desert-dwelling city builders who worship the sun, and the Osaram are tinkerers known for their metalworking, brewing and arguing. Now you play as Alloy, who as a child obtains a focus, discovering what that means and what it is, and more importantly, how you as an individual matter to the overall story is one of the biggest mysteries of Horizon Zero Dawn. So if we're talking about story, let's just get this out of the way. It's simply fantastic. The story itself contains two main arcs that around halfway through the game unite, creating one larger arc overall. There's a political story going on based around the Sun King and the overall story of who you are and what happened to the humans of the past. At first, the political story and intrigue and the growth of Alloy keep you interested but don't necessarily blow you away. From about the halfway point, however, I did not want to stop playing, unraveling the various mysteries of the world you live in and what exactly is Horizon Zero Dawn really kept me going. Is the story the first of its kind a complete unique story? Not necessarily, but it does offer a refreshingly different look at a post-apocalyptic story. Frankly, I'm more astonished of how clever it portrays the events that took place both in the past and how they unite with the present of Alloy's life and who she is. One thing that has to be said right away is that Alloy is a great strong female character who really grows on you as she progresses through the adventure and as you see her interact and deal with the world around her. This is important beyond the fact that it's just a great character. In a world where we're constantly hearing about how women are over-sexualized, how there's not enough strong females in video games, this is a great example of how that's just not true. Alloy is a badass. Because she's a girl, doesn't make it any better or make it any worse. The real difference in a game like this is that they don't take a woman and they just put her in the role of a character or as a main character to say they have a girl lead. No, in this case, her sex really is not what defines her. What defines her is the way she interacts with the world around her and how Frank Frankly, she's a lovable character full of courage and bravery. Now beyond Alloy, you will also meet a couple supporting characters that either mentor you or fight alongside you throughout your 35 to 40 hour adventure. They all fit their role really well. Silas is especially noteworthy as the voice actor gave a fabulous performance. Plus I felt like John Wick every time we talked, which is a cool thing in itself. The greatest compliment I can give about the story is that I felt fulfilled. Often games start good, build up the action, hit the climax, and then fall flat on their face. A lot of times this happens because they're too desperate to set up a sequel. Well not in this game. I felt completely fulfilled at the end of Alloy's adventure which speaks to the great writing that takes place throughout the game. As far as the pacing is concerned, I thought it was pretty good. In open world games, it's very easy to get sidetracked by a bunch of side missions, especially for me. I tend to be over leveled for story missions in open world games because I do all the side missions first and frankly I like it that way. If you don't I highly suggest you do a varied sense of a couple side missions and some main missions and back and forth otherwise you may run across this issue. One nice thing is if we're comparing this to other open world games like Fallout 4 when the main story mission felt like it was urgent you could quickly step aside and do some side missions that almost made the impact of what was going on around you seem silly. I didn't feel that this time around. I felt like the main story missions were self-contained and they finished an idea and you had some time on your own to work on whatever you need it next, which was nice because it kept the immersion going. With that in mind, some of the missions that dealt with the political intrigue and the storyline that focused on current events instead of the grander picture did tend to drag on just a bit. Never to the point that I hated it, but enough that I put off some missions for a bit in the lieu of the action oriented side missions. However, it was completely worth getting to the end of the story so it didn't hinder my experience. One thing I didn't like was how you received experience points for missions. You don't get any points or rewards until the entire mission is completed. This becomes a pain because most missions have several parts to them and require traveling somewhat far distances. 
I often found myself wanting to finish some other missions that were in the area of part of a main mission at the cost of collecting needed XP to level up. One other gripe I had that did affect the pacing in the early game was the fast travel system. For some reason they have you buy these fast travel packs at merchants that allow you to fast travel once per pack in the beginning section of the game. This is later alleviated by purchasing the gold fast travel pack from a merchant when you get enough shards, which is their form of currency. But why was that system in the game in the first place? To force you to walk a bit? I don't really get it. If you were going to be able to infinitely travel once you found the correct merchant with a gold fast travel pack, then fast travel should have just been available from the beginning. I could only imagine they wanted you to explore the beautiful world around you, which makes sense, but I think it's a bit of a design flaw. As far as gameplay is concerned, this is a third person action adventure game in every sense of the word. In place of guns, you get a bow. The bow play is awesome. It's satisfying and smooth. The same can't be said about the physical combat however. It's very clunky, inaccurate and should be avoided if possible. There is also some very basic platforming but most of it happens automatically by just pushing the joystick in the direction you need to climb or go in. This varies from other games of this genre like Uncharted or the Tomb Raider series where you feel like you're still kind of platforming on your own. A big aspect of the gameplay is gathering materials such as health regenerating plants and sticks to make arrows. This may or may not be annoying to you, just keep in mind that this is very very much an ever present part of the game. The crafting itself is easy enough to complete and offers a fast way to create items and potions for use. As far as weapons are concerned, there are a couple different options for bows, like the sniper bow versus the heavy bow, or the slingshot, which rains down elemental damage on the enemy. One interesting weapon is the rope caster, which helps you lock down an enemy. This is great when you are surrounded by many machines and need some breathing space. Ultimately, you will stick to four weapons, since navigating through the menu to find a weapon that's not on your main weapon wheel tends to break the experience too much to be worth doing. You can buy upgraded versions of main weapons like the bow and rope caster, but it's ultimately worth it just to save up and buy the best later. When you do enter your weapon wheel, you'll see that time slows down a bit, which is a nice touch. The unlocking system is pretty fair and I look forward to each upgrade. You unlock powers like more health, slowing down time when jumping, and stealth skills. You can also hack robots, which is useful for traveling faster on horseback. The majority of the robots you hack will make them fight for you. Unfortunately, you can't ride the bird. Yeah, I know, this sucks. Now let's talk a little bit about the presentation. This is where the game truly shines. It's a top-notch game with high production value. It's obvious time, care, and effort went into this game. I did run into a couple glitches and actually two crashes, but that was in my entire play. I'm not ecstatic about that, but I'm not heartbroken either. One fault it does have is a lack of explanation. Again, this is why we need manuals in game boxes. A number of the stuff I just had to figure out myself because it wasn't very clear how to operate. Selling items can also be pretty irritating. There's no real way to organize your items. You just have to scroll through everything each time. One of the biggest disappointments for me as far as the presentation and the menu is concerned is that the quick menu only had four weapons. This forces you to be confined into choosing four main weapons and sticking to those. Otherwise, you have to suffer breaking the flow of combat by having to go to the main menu and choosing another weapon. It's rumored that this was supposed to be fixed in a future patch, but at the time of this recording it still isn't, and frankly they should have realized this as an issue beforehand. Lastly, the map looks great. It's not terribly functional necessarily, but it is detailed. I would have liked to have been able to zoom in just a wee bit more to really get a view of the different locations, especially the locations of the cauldrons, which can all too easily be missed if you're not paying close attention to your surroundings. Although these cauldrons are basically side missions, they're necessary if you want to be able to control the different robots, and there's no real way to find them beyond just running into them at some point. One touch which I think is absolutely fantastic is that you can have the HUD disappear and appear with a touch of the touchpad on the PS4 controller. The setting allows the HUD to disappear and reappear if you touch the trackpad on the controller. Please make sure to experience it the game that way. It elevates the level of immersion significantly. It's absolutely impressive that there are no real load times to speak of, especially considering how beautiful this game looks on a PS4. You can run from one point of the map to the other without dealing with any loading. If you fast travel, you will see a loading screen which varies in length depending on how far away you are transporting. The only real long load you experience is when you first load your save file when getting into the game again. This one can be a bit long but it's totally worth dealing with when you consider the beautiful world of Horizon Zero Dawn. This almost doesn't need to be said but Horizon Zero Dawn is absolutely gorgeous. The game is a testament to what talented game developing can create when it's done right and not just for a quick buck. This is one of the most beautiful looking games I have ever seen, and the fact that it looks this good on a PS4 is truly amazing. I did see some texture pop-ins, but I literally only noticed it twice. 
The characters themselves also look great. The lip movement can be a little odd and out of sync at times, but still looks better than most games, and the motion capture is fantastic. The robots themselves also look great. You can see the individual parts as they twist and turn on the actual machine, and that's not counting the pieces you can break off of them, which is a major part of the combat. Overall, superb graphics. Now let's talk about the music, the sound, and the voice. The music fits the game well. I would have liked some more variety, as I heard the same battle tracks often. Although it never got annoying, it was still noticeable. This is also a compliment to how well the music fits. I did run into a weird bug a few times where the music just randomly stopped playing if I went to a new area of the map. Not a big deal, but still worth noting. The actual sounds around you are superb. Every crunch, squish, and step fits perfectly with your surrounding environment. The machine sounds are especially cool, giving the impression of parts moving all over these threatening enemies. The same seamless connection between sound and what you see can't be said when it comes to voice acting. All the main characters, especially Alloy, are superb. Alloy can carry the game herself along with her makeshift mentor, Silas. However, the side characters you run across often sound subpar and can really take you out of the experience. It's obvious that all the effort and financial resources went into the main characters because there is an extremely large gap of quality between the voice acting found from primary supportive characters and the people that fill in the rest of the world. The cinematics were perfect. They were never too long and always felt relevant. The way a ton of exposition is told quickly and efficiently is especially commendable. You can pause them at any time, which is awesome. I don't know why every game does not include this. The beginning cinematics that set up the story are especially noteworthy. I was deeply invested in the characters character of Alloy almost right away because of how she is presented. I would have liked a couple more scripted action cinematics, but that's just my personal preference. As far as content is concerned, there's plenty in the game for you. There are the main story missions, which tend to be interesting, but somewhat easier than the side missions. There are also the side quests that have a separate short story of their own, and then the generic fetch or go kill specific creature quests. There are also many different kind of machines and enemies. It's exciting to see what crazy creature you will fight next. The world map itself is pretty big. You have a forest type location, a huge desert, and icy mountains. It doesn't really make sense geologically, but when first walking into a new area, you're going to love the change of scenery. This diversity keeps the game fresh and makes sure one place doesn't overstay its welcome. There are also a number of items to find that can then be sold to a special vendor, like a special metal flower or ancient artifacts from the old world. This is mostly filler material for a completionist and isn't necessarily crucial to your quest. Lastly, you find special locations where you get a view of what the old world was like. These are cool because they offer you a glimpse of the past which will technically be our future. Just recently, about a week and a half to two weeks ago, they added the new game plus mode. It would have been nice to have it in the beginning, but it's nice that we have it now. I hope they follow through with some of the other things they promised like extending the weapon wheel, but we'll see how that goes. So what's the verdict? Well, we give this game a 9 out of 10. Simply put, this game is amazing. Not only is Horizon Zero Dawn absolutely beautiful, but it is a one-of-a-kind experience. Does Horizon Zero Dawn reinvent the wheel? No. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But it doesn't have to be. What it does is take great ideas from many other games and stories and creatively make them feel new and refreshing. The story is great. The gameplay is addictive and fun. And there's plenty of content to justify buying it at full price. Which now, if you were to purchase today, you don't have to. Games like Horizon Zero Dawn stand out as defining a console generation. We believe this game is truly remarkable and everyone should get a copy and play it at some point within their life. All right, that's our review. Let me know what you think below. If you've played it, let me know what you thought. If you haven't played it, let me know if this has changed your mind to want to interest you in playing it. Also, if you have any suggestions about this review and how I can improve it in the future, please let me know. And apart from that, please make sure to like the video if you did like it. And if you like our content, make sure to subscribe as we'll try to keep uploading as much as we can. Thanks for watching.